Hello, Irish fans, and welcome to Dome and Domer, the oldest Notre Dame football podcast on the planet. Joining me tonight, as always, Ed Jordanik from ndnation.com, Mike Coffey. Uh, Ed, I'll start with you. You didn't, you weren't on for the previous show, but, um, you know, we it, it, uh, again, we kind of nailed it, although I'll give more credit to Coffey, probably had a better prediction of blowing them out. However, having said that, if you watch the game, uh, the offense in the first half, I think I could correct me if I'm wrong, but they had five, three and outs, five in the first half. Um, now, granted, some of those were Sounds penalties. Sounds like Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll t- yeah, I hear you. Uh, but you know the the reality of the matter is, is that, I mean, we had some penalties. We had a uh, you know stuff that a ten yard loss on one of them. I mean, we were in bad spots in all of them. But I think you know, just you know, here we are. We're 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 Notre Dame fans. We're all excited. We got two games left, and we're looking at all the positives. But they're all we're also nervous about. Okay, what what could go wrong for us? And clearly, that's it's got to be one of the concerns. It's got to be one of the things you're thinking about. Defense is playing lights out like they have all season. Can they continue to do that game in and game out? Are they are they going to have an off game at all in these last two games? I mean, wh- what happens if we, we kind of just aren't clicking on defense? Then what? Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll talk about – well, it's a couple things that you're bringing up. I mean, first of all, I do think that um, – by its nature, very, very few college football teams over the course of a season are consistently good in particular areas. I mean, there's, there's going to, and, you know, we won 35 to 14, but there was going to come a game, um, and it oftentimes, sometimes can happen um, in the senior, senior week where families come into town and yeah. a lot of distractions, um, but the offense did, did regress a little bit. Um, but I would argue that it wasn't so much, um, it was just key mistakes at bad times. You know, I've never seen so many hands to the face penalties in one game. Um, you know, there was, uh, there was just some breakdowns, some, some penalties that, uh, um, set things back. There was a drop. I think, uh, you know, there were a couple drops maybe, um, I think Faison had a drop and so did, uh, Collins. Did, yeah. Um, Bo Collins. Yeah. So, yeah. It was just one of those uneven games, um, but you know they 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 overcame that. I mean, I actually think not to skip ahead a little bit, but I actually think Army is not, again, relatively speaking, not that great a matchup for Notre Dame in the sense that if Notre Dame's defense has a weakness, and it really doesn't, especially lately, but um, you know there have been points during the season where they've gotten gashed, right, where they've given up. Yeah. Um, some running yardage, Northern Illinois, Louisville, um, you know, even uh, um, I'm trying to re- recall the other game, but well, in the first they, quarter, Florida State, but <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Good yeah. point, good point. And so, and that's obviously what Army does the best, right? That's their that's their bread and butter. So that concerns me a little bit. And then, you know, the strength of Army's team this year um, is defense, right? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. are an excellent defensive team, and Certainly the weakness um, of this Notre Dame team, you would have to say that we're a better defensive team than we are on offense. So just in those broad strokes, it seems like, um, you know, the matchup is, uh, is not optimal. Um, I mean, I still think we should win by, you know, three or four touchdowns, two or three touchdowns. But, you know, that said, I think that, um, and I, I also think it's kind of time for Notre Dame to go on the road. Notre Dame has played well um, on the road this year. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's been some of their best performances. They played really well in the Meadowlands. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think it'll be a Notre Dame crowd uh, at Yankee Stadium. So, um, you know, I expect, I, expect them, I expect them to play better on offense Saturday. Does that mean, you know, they'll score 35 points? Um, I just expect them to execute better. I expect them to have fewer mistakes um, and, uh, um and I, I just think it was kind of a good little wake up call for the offense this past yeah. Saturday that, hey, we still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, it could be. You know, I, uh, 
Coffee, I think that uh, it, it's unfortunate, but probably the best throw of the season for Riley Leonard was called back on on the crossing route that he had. Um, but, I, you know, strangely enough, it wasn't Riley Leonard not executing. It was other guys. Um, you know, Bull Collins, I, I hate to say this, but I think he might have had his worst game of the year. I mean, he had that drop pass, but he also didn't really get after a couple other throws where it wasn't like he was really positioned really well and wasn't, you know, attacking the ball at the highest point, trying to reel it in and bring it down. I don't know. It just seemed to me like he kind of struggled a bit. Faison had that drop. Um, he had the penalties that brought it back. Riley Leonard continues to run the football like he always has, which is at an elite level. And, you know, with him and Price and Love in the back backfield, I mean, those, those are three legitimate elite runners. No, no, um, no. But, but uh, is there any concern there for you moving forward in terms of your thoughts on the offense? Is, is that well, something we should is, be worried about? This is two games in a row where the offense just didn't really like, – I think the offense benefited from some short fields. I think they got hurt by some not very good officiating. I mean, the hands to the face penalties were, I mean, especially in the case of Coogan's on a long run. I mean, it's when, when the head snaps back, it's going to get called. Yeah. But like the call and the fake punt was terrible. I obviously these are refs who weren't familiar with the rule and just decided to applied in a way where at the very least they, they couldn't be accused of affecting the outcome of the game in favor. Of, well, I suppose either way they were going to affect the outcome of the game, but I think the referees got caught flat footed, but to your point, this is the second game in a row where the offense just didn't really seem to click and the defense certainly made its presence felt no doubt about it. And I think a lot of the energy that they showed has been, it's been consistent throughout the year. I mean, even in games like Northern where we gave up a lot of runs, I mean, it's not like they gave up a lot of points. So right. I think it, it doesn't necessarily concern me. The, the only thing that would concern me about the offense against Army, I, do, I don't think Army really has the physicality to match up well with Notre Dame's offense. My issue is going to be the number of opportunities they get. And we had this discussion uh, for the Navy game, where if Army plays disciplined, keep it on the ground football, and you know Notre Dame misses an assignment here and there, all of a sudden guy's gone for 20, 30 yards, and thanks to Army's tendency to play ball control, that you have two or three fewer possessions than you would normally, so you don't have as many chances to recover from mistakes that you might make. Now I'm high, as I said last week, I'm heighten or I feel better hearing that they spent some time during the bye week when Navy was still fresh in their mind about option defense and reinforcing and they're not the same offenses but at the basic level assignment football on defense is going to be crucial and yeah. I I'm confident that they can play strong football but nobody's perfect every play and after two weeks in a row of the offense being eh um, I don't know if we can afford another eh game from the offense. I mean, they're really going to have – I think they're going to have to contribute because they're going to have fewer opportunities to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, back to Ed's point about them probably executing better than they did last weekend. I tend to agree with that. Um, I think they will. But uh, it is interesting. The um, Notre Dame is number one in terms of stops in college football. Army's number three, so they're not far behind us. Um, but they, they, their schedule is probably, I think, what, third worst? I mean, they've they played absolutely nobody. And so you could hang your hat on some of that. That being the case, I think right right from the get-go, just like in the now, Navy game. What do you game, mean by stops, Mike? Do you mean like third down stops, or what do you mean? Uh, you know, I, yeah, I think it's stopped. I, I, it was an ESPN stat that was put out. I didn't go into the details of it. I just saw the rankings so they had notre dame number one in terms of stops and yeah, right, it's was, it's called stop rate and it, it it says it's a basic measurement it's got the percentage of a defense's drives that end in punts turnovers or turnover on downs okay. basically 
Okay. Okay. So, like, if your stop rate is 90%, that means 90% of the time when your opponent gets the ball, they either kick it back score. to you, they turn it over, or yeah. they yeah. don't get a first when they need it. Yeah. No, but I think in the case of Army, look, I mean, it, there's – there is a difference in talent level just lining up. We, we all know that. That's clearly the case. However, uh, although they're a little bit undersized on the defensive line, they're they're pretty stout. They're strong. They're quick. They're fast. These guys do play good defense. And then, like Coffee mentioned, when in terms of limited possessions, in their last game, Army got the ball with 13 minutes and 50 seconds in the third quarter. And on a single drive, ate up the entire quarter. They went into the fourth quarter on their last play. So, I mean, think of that. That resulted in a touchdown probably, right? No, it did, yeah. But but the point is, is that, I mean, just think of that, that. That if our offense is sitting on the sidelines after doing a three and out, <laughs> and, the, and the clock's getting – now, granted, that means that they're moving against our defense, but – the the weird thing about Army is, and Navy it falls into the same category, is three yards on first down, three yards on second down, two yards on third down, and they go for it when there's fourth and two and they get the first down. Then you're back to first down again. And it's just that, you know, it's that ability to kind of just chip away, chip away, chip away. Howard Cross is not playing. Pretty obvious he's not going to see the field. That's a guy that's got six years of experience going against this. We don't have that now. Um, granted, we got Kaiser, which is more kind of your critical piece is the linebacker play, being able to make quick reads and make quick decisions. So hopefully that comes to our fruition. But I mean, these are the kind of things that you just never know in a game like this. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, the the playing a team like Army or Navy can be pretty demoralizing if you don't get off to a good start. Notre Dame got off to a really good start against Navy, pounced, forced turnovers. Um, you know, I think the first quarter is going to be really important. If they can get a couple, you know, a couple touchdowns, you know, um, limit um, Army to maybe a three and out or six and out or something like that, um, then uh, then I think you know they'll they'll be in control of the ball game. But if you if you get into the second quarter and you're sort of, you know, behind the chains and Army's dominating time of possession and even if they kick a field goal or two um, and you're on skates a little bit on defense, um, it can it can really sort of, you know, get in your head a little bit because you know that you've got to make the most of every single time you have the ball, just like you said, Mike. So, um, so to me, the way to beat an academy team is to really pounce on them quick, um, you know, and make them have to sort of, quote unquote, throw the ball or make them have to, um, you know, get into some third and longs. Um, I will say that, you know, special teams will play a role, probably could, could play a role. Um, not a great field goal kicking situation for Notre Dame right now. Um, but on the other hand, um, this team seems to be an inch or two away from blocking just about every punt that, that that's, uh, yeah, that is that's, true. You know, it seems like they're going for every single one. Um, yeah. Now they had a muff. Um, you know, they missed a couple field goals. Um, you know, there's issues there. Um, so they've got to clean that, clean that up. I hate that phrase. And now I just used it. Every coach says that. Um, but they've got to play. Uh, uh, they've got to have a really solid, um, solid uh, return game. You know, no turnovers, no, nothing stupid. Um, you know, and maybe get a uh, maybe get a tip, a tip punt or something like that to change momentum. Um, not quite sure why they. Uh, why they use the fake against uh, Virginia, <laughs> that good of a play. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully they've got a few more um, of those up their sleeves because they might need one against SC to change momentum or in a playoff game. So, um, but anyways, I'm a little, I, I'm, I'm not apprehensive because um, I think, um, you know, I think, like you said, Notre Dame, or, uh, Army's opponents have been really lackluster uh, this year to at best. Um, but you don't go nine and zero without uh, without some really good, solid, consistent play in the trenches and um, some good defense. And I think they do both. So um, you know, I think Notre Dame better be ready to play. But I do think playing on the road, or you know, even and kind of playing on the road, but in front of like a favorable crowd, is kind of exactly the the formula that is called for this week. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know, Coffee, if you've watched the press conferences the last two weeks. Um, you know, I, I typically don't watch the press conferences. I did these last two weeks. And I got to tell you, I really liked what I heard from Marcus Freeman. Um, there was one particular question early on in the press conference where uh, the reporter asked them, hey, Marcus, what do you think? Do you do you think you guys have a chance to make the playoffs? <laughs> and Freeman didn't playoffs. even hesitate. He didn't even hesitate. He he looked at him and said, what does it matter what Marcus Freeman thinks? What does that have to do with anything? Well, that, right. is a good, that is a very I good answer. It was very good awesome. Question, so. But it just goes to show where he's at. And, I mean, he's clearly dialed in. Look, at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to lose against Army. Will we have a lackluster effort that kind of, you know, we, you know, one of those games where we win it, but we don't look great and – the game for me is USC. I mean, I I, I just think that's just going to be a. I mean, it's it's USC, right? It's rivalry. You have mm-hmm. no idea what's going to happen. Everybody could all of a sudden click because they just want to knock us out of the playoffs. They're going to be fired up at least early on. All the more reason why we got to come out again out of the gate strong, just like we do against the Army. But I mean, realistically, what what what's your Take on what do you think is going to happen Saturday against the Army? Well, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The fact that they're playing this game in New York is dumb. They and I understand the whole New York four horse on it. It's it's dumb. It is dumb. It's it was dumb the last time they did it when they flew to New York to play in Yankee Stadium the next to last week of the season and then flew to LA the next week. Play that's that's a lot of travel and it's dumb. Now having said that. I, I realize that a lot of people are talking about Army's schedule. They haven't played anybody, and they're right. Um, I think, though, games like this and teams like service academies, you give them an inch and they'll take more than a mile because they, they already, for the most part, have the discipline, the mental discipline to stay focused. You give them a seven, ten point lead, especially with, as you pointed out, Notre Dame's field goal kicking situation is not good so if, if Andy has to line up for a 47 yarder to overcome like a one or two point deficit near the end of the game I'm not confident in that situation at all having said that uh I know I I, I think Notre Dame's defense can definitely carry the day again I think there's a value to having played Navy already and Marcus Freeman said it's not Navy 2.0 but it's Definitely Navy one point something because it's just the 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 discipline that's required to play against these guys. Uh, having a game already under your belt away from home where you had to do that is a big plus. So I, I if we're looking for predictions, I know in our contest I I picked uh, thirty one to fourteen only because I don't I, I just uh, I think it's going to be a very short game. And the number of possessions Notre Dame's going to get won't allow them to get that far ahead. Yeah, that makes some sense. Does anybody Ed, want to know you... how? Does anybody know how? Want to want to know how bad Chuck Martin is kicking Northern Illinois' ass right now? Uh, oh, I don't God, think I want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, yikes! But we we played we we beat we played Miami too, right? We did, yeah. So for, yeah. from a, this this is like a, a null effect on right, our strength right. of schedule because we yeah. beat well. What was the score when we play, beat Miami? Do you remember? I well, it was, it was pretty good. I can tell you like about two seconds. It, it was, it was, uh, another, it was uh, Miami was actually it was twenty eight to three. Okay, yeah, it was our offense was still sort of getting off the schneid. And my recollection is Miami made its share of mistakes and they did. We got some. We got some they short gave, fields and, and they gave won. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways, well, what what is what do you guys think about the? The current standings. Um, I see that Notre Dame is number six um, in the Over playoff. The eight seed. What's that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're the a... number eight seed. With this, this whole conference champions get the fourth. That, that's, I mean, Swarber can pat himself on the butt all he wants, but that's a really, really dumb set. Speaking of dumb yeah, things, I don't know how that's we, a dumb setup. It's I don't know how we created that. That doesn't make any sense to me. And and especially when you consider all these, like the Big Ten and the SEC, and even the ACC mammoth conferences. You have so many teams not playing each other that they're going down like to the seventh or eighth tie break to figure out who should be 
in the yeah. championship game. So you end up with a team like Penn State at eleven and one, who probably who may not, who probably won't make their won't won't make the championship game because they lost to Ohio State. But they're still sitting there at like eleven and one and can sneak into the playoffs and it's just it, it's so stupid. Well, isn't the key question um, will the committee put a one loss Notre Dame team ahead of every two loss team? Yeah, that's I mean, that is a question. question. Yes, that that's the question, right? Because if they yep. do, I think Notre Dame has a pretty decent chance to be in a you know being a you know a, a six or seven. Um, which, yeah. which is fine by me. I, right. I would love to be a six or seven because then you, you get a home game, theoretically a winnable one. And then the second round, you're in a bowl against like the ACC champ or the Big 12 champ or something. Exactly. And exactly. it's a much, much better, much easier path. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, that's going to sort of, you know, it's uh, the A&M Texas game um, is uh is of some importance, right? Because if AM can win that game, both those teams will be below us, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the game this weekend is obviously important. If Indiana wins, I'd be pretty surprised if Ohio State doesn't drop um, below us, right? I think they do, for sure. Um, I, 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 I think, think they would. And I think, I think Minnesota has a hell of a good chance to beat Penn State. Penn State is not a very good football team. I, I agree. I, I, I agree surprised, 100%. I'm surprised that they're on the – you know, the top end of these rankings, they didn't, you know, they didn't, I don't think Ohio state is a dominant team this year and, and Penn state, you know, were, was pretty lame against them. So, um, I mean, number 25, I, Illinois is the only team Penn state really is beat. Right. Yeah. So, right. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think we're still, you know, one of a, a pretty small group of teams, um, that's beaten, um, um, you know, that's beaten, um, four bowl eligible teams, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, whatever. I, I, I have to say, I think, you know, the committee's given Notre Dame a fair shake so far. I mean, um, somebody made the argument in an article I read that basically the loss to Northern Illinois has been um, nullified. Um, you know, in other words, like, not that it's been nullified completely, but that it's sort of, you know, worst loss ever. This will keep you out of, you know, whatever you want to achieve. Right, kind to of just thing. the one but loss. That's kind of, that, yeah. that narrative has sort of died. And that, um, you know, if Notre Dame takes care of business against Army and USC, they will be treated like a one-loss football team um, as opposed to, you know, a team that lost to, you know, Chaminade or something. Um, you know, yep. so um, so we'll see. It, we'll see if that's true. But I think I think um, when I look, try and look at it objectively, I do think Notre Dame should be ranked ahead of um, any two-loss team, and that includes teams from the SEC and the Big Ten. It, it looks like it. I think it's going to end up that way. I agree with you, especially if we, you know, went out here um, and take care of business. I, I I find it hard to believe that we're going to drop below anybody um, just because of how good the defense is. I, I think that I it's, mean, any, it's not like we're squeaking by terrible. Teams. No, no. no these are, yeah, yeah. And I just think the way that the defense is playing and, and how everybody knows that that's probably the best if you're going to be good on one side, you'd be better off being good on that side. And um, and I think that's going to give credence to Notre Dame. So I, I expect us to finish seventh is kind of what I think, just because of the way that the conferences are going to shake out. I think there might be one upset in the conferences. I think maybe a two-loss team wins the ACC. Um who knows? I mean, yeah, but if, if a two loss team wins the ACC, then everyone in the ACC has at least two losses. So their champion gets in. I think, poor else. I think, well, they'll take that, they'll take that top spot. And then we got a tougher time to match up against, you know, a higher seat at large who didn't, you know, I, I don't know. It's going to get interesting. I, I do like where we're at at the moment because I think that that's where we'd want to be. Um, I don't think there's an argument to put us higher than that. IU is going to take care of itself. I do think they're going to beat Ohio State. By the way, I don't, I don't think I, mean, I don't right. think that's going to shock anybody. If you watched IU play at all this year, they're pretty legit. They've got a ton of talent. They got some big time receivers. I, I think IU or Ohio State is not as stout on the offense and defensive line like they have been in the past. And I, I think that's going to come back to bite them. I think they've got a pretty pedestrian quarterback too. He's um, he's decent, but yeah, you're yeah, right. He's, he's not, not. He's he's not like a huge upgrade over Kyle McCord, no, as far as no, I'm concerned. No, sure, um, I, I would agree. But 
Yeah. Now here's I, a, here's something to think about. What happens? Ohio State gets beat by Illinois. Effectively, they're out of Indiana, the, Indiana. Or, or Indiana rather, and they're effectively out of the playoffs. And we're sitting here, uh, like on Christmas, and Notre Dame's won their first round game. They're in the semifinals, and Ohio State comes knocking at uh, Freeman's door. Ah, we can't worry about that. <laughs> no, yeah, but now you're thinking that. about it. Yeah, they they uh, will. I mean, oh, they're they're looking for a reason to get rid of Ryan Day. Yeah, but... I've heard that stuff before. <laughs> I mean, I I just I don't I don't know. I I don't I don't have that. I mean, I'd be, you know, I mean, I, I give I give I give uh, the Hoosiers a hell of a lot of credit. I mean, they they just threw after ten games. Granted, ten of the best games in there. Yeah. In their football school's history, but they just backed up the truck for Signetti. Oh, and, they did, yeah. You know, and um, I, I feel pretty confident that um, that this is sort of one of Bavakwa's strengths. I mean, he's played with the Sharks for a long time. I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure his, you know, his his game theory skills are pretty decent, and he's thinking through all that stuff. I mean, you know, listen, it's the same kind of thing. You know, I think, you know, I think Indiana's going to come knocking on Shrewsbury's door. Um, yeah. If his his yeah. arrow is up, um, I really like what I see the way that they the way that they play. I mean, they're a much yeah. improved offensive team. They are. Um, he seems to have kind of pulled some really good pieces in. So you know, that's that's the price of success. But um, but I like uh, I like our chances of keeping Marcus around for a while. I think part of it is is I think. I think he's the kind of guy that, uh, you know, these relationships with these kids are really, really important to him. And at the very least, he's not going to jump at a chance. And if you don't jump at that Ohio State job, then you've got boosters and Bavacqua and people you give them some time, Father Bob, whoever, to really work on him, you know. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, by all accounts, uh, he and his family are, are happy in South Bend and know have have made a home here and he's got he's got young kids so you know that is uh that's a factor you know he's definitely a family guy and uh, i think his wife will have a big say so in this because there's nothing sort of more uh you know there's nothing sort of more disruptive than you know we all know this pulling pulling kids out of their uh comfort zone when they're eight nine ten eleven years old so um maybe i'm wrong i mean it's a business and obviously he's an ohio guy um but I think in the same way that sort of, you know, NIL and uh, all this stuff has, uh, um, you know, changed the game. Um, I also think that there are, uh, you know, a number of coaches that are starting to look at things a little bit differently. Um, and I think Marcus Freeman is one of those guys that, uh, you know, um, you know, be careful. You know, the grass is not always greener. I mean, he's yeah. uh, right. and. Uh, He's going to have a much, much less leeway um, in Columbus than he will at South in South Bend, especially if he wins a playoff game this year. Mm-hmm. No doubt, I agree with that. What What's your prediction, Ed? What do you think is going to happen Saturday? The score? Um, yeah, I like I like what you guys said about limited opportunities. So, um, I'm going to say I'm going to say Notre Dame wins twenty eight to ten. They cover, but just barely. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I got 28-17 um, because I, I think it is going to be tight. I do think that it's going to be limited possessions. and um, But, yeah, I, I, I don't see us losing this football game. I think we win just because our defense will outshine and, and prevent them from putting more than 17 on the board. And, and I think we might sneak one, whether it's a defensive score and a special teams. But, um, but I, I think this is going to, you know, put one heck of a <laughs> one heck of a pressure cooker on the USC game. I mean, I, I don't I assume that game will be a 330 game. I can't imagine well, they put that. it they put it on a six day hold only because I think they want to make sure Notre Dame wins Saturday. Because if for whatever yeah, reason they lose to Army, then then it'll probably end up being like the seven o'clock game on whatever on the Ocho or something. But uh I th- want to say the um it sounds like the choices are either three thirty-seven or seven thirty Eastern time, and the only way I could see it ended up during the day is if uh, 
But I mean, keep in mind, I think uh, Texas versus A and M is that night. I think that's one of that's that the big too, yeah. thing. So yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. Yep, awesome. All right, well, good deal. That's perfect. Let's leave it there. You've been listening to Doma Domer, an online conversation about Notre Dame sports from a fan's perspective. For Ed Jordanic and Mike Coffey, I'm Mike Brammer. Thanks for listening.